Okay, guys, at this point we've um, kind of rehashed a lot of our physics for rotational systems, and I want to extend that discussion of rotational dynamics to the concept of work. So, um, work in a rotational system. And um, we'll see, we'll kind of proceed in, in, a, in much the same way that, that we have up into this point, which is by just coming up with a rotational analog to our equation for work. So if we recall that work in general is given by a, an integral of some force dot dx, um, which in the, in the case of a constant or uniform force uh, is equal to f dot d. Um, so now if we think about it, if we're, if we're in a rotational system, we're going to essentially um, just plug in our uh, our rotational analogs. In other words, we're going to get the integral of what's our rotational analog for f? Well, that's torque, right? Torque dot, not dx, but rather d theta. And in the case of a, a uniform uniform torque, um, you end up with tor torque uh, times delta theta. So this is our rotation definition of work in our rotational system so let's put that to the side and having a um, having an understanding of um, work in a rotational system we can then think about our old work energy theorem which we remember is the the total work done on a system is equal to the change in kinetic energy and now we can just extend this for a rotational system this this principle still applies, and so what can we say? We can say that the the total work done, or the the net torque on the system, so let's say torque net times delta theta is equal to the change in kinetic energy. That's one half i omega final squared minus one half i omega initial squared. And this now is the work energy theorem for a rotational system. And finally, the last thing that we can say in this, in this regard is uh, to think about power, right? So power we defined as dW d theta, or the rate at which um, work is done, um, which is still the case here. But uh, before we reduced this, we said that this was equal to force times velocity. So now we're going to say this is equal to torque times omega. So this is our final rotational dynamics equation. So these are really old equations just um, adapted for a rotational system by plugging in our, our various rotational analogs. To see how this might play out um, in a problem, let, 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 let's try a problem. I'm actually going to throw a problem out and, uh, and I'm going to solve it two different ways to get kind of a sense for how you could take a problem and, and, and approach it um, using these equations. So let's imagine we have this disc, here's this disc, a pulley, maybe we'd like to think of it. And um, the pulley, we're going to say, has a mass of 2.5 kilograms, so m equals 2.5 kilograms. Uh, let's say that the radius of the pulley is 20 centimeters. And um, let's imagine that this pulley, this disc, is being accelerated by a tension force. There's a tension force here. And I'm just going to tell you that the tension force in the, in the pulley here, T equals, let's say, 6 newtons. And we're going to imagine that this is a constant value, that the, the tension remains constant. And um, as a result of this tension, the disk is accelerating. So the, the disk is experiencing an angular acceleration. Um, this is accelerating counterclockwise. It's going to be a negative acceleration. Negative, or sorry, clockwise, right, which is... Right, this thing, as a result of the torque, this thing is going to go this way, which is negative. So we're going to say that this is negative 24 radians per second squared. And um, the question, what we'd like to know is, um, here's the question. After 2.5 seconds, We'd like to know what's the 
angular speed after actually no we'll say what's the kinetic energy after 2.5 seconds and let's assume um, we'll, we'll go ahead and say omega initial is zero in other words this thing starts from rest at t equals zero the the thing isn't spinning and then starting at t equals zero this force of six newtons is applied to the disk causing a torque causing an acceleration of 24 radians per second squared. And after 2.5 seconds later, we'd like to know what is the kinetic energy. So let's approach this. There's two different ways to, to approach this. The first way, so let's, I'll do it one way right here. Um, the first way is to use the definition of kinetic energy, right? The, the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half I omega squared. That's our definition of kinetic energy. Well, the change in kinetic energy, since the initial kinetic energy is zero, the change in kinetic energy is just going to be equal to the final kinetic energy. So delta K is simply one-half I omega final squared. And uh, we can find I right away, right? We can find the rotational inertia right away because we know the mass and we know the radius of the disk. So we could go ahead and, and find I right away, but we, we've got to do a little bit of work to find omega. So let's, first of all, maybe I'll go ahead and just say uh, I, let's calculate I, that's uh, for a disk, that's one half, that's one half m r squared. So in this case, one half m r squared, what are we gonna get out of this? Um, one half of the mass, that's 1.25 times 0.2 squared. What does that give us? One half, one point two five times point two squared. So this is point zero five. And um, omega, how we're going to find omega? Uh, the, the omega isn't constant, right? There's an acceleration here, and we've got to take that into consideration. So what I'm going to use is one of our old angular kinematic equations, and I'm going to say that omega equals omega initial plus alpha t. Omega initial is zero, right? This thing is, it starts, we said it starts at rest, so this is zero. So I can say that omega equals negative 24 times t, which for our problem is 2.5. So that's negative 60 radians per second. And now I can go ahead and solve for the kinetic energy because I know the i and I know um, the omega. So I'm going to say that uh, delta K now is one half 0.05 times negative 60 squared. And we do that out and we end up with a kinetic energy here of 90 joules. Um, so that's one way of doing it, just using the definition of kinetic energy um, and then using a kinematic equation. So it's good to see that. Uh, I'd like to do it now another way, another way that involves, um, that involves using torque. So let's, I'm just gonna erase some of this stuff here. We can have some space to work with. We should get the same answer. But I'd like to think about this using the work energy theorem. So thinking about the torque. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead Let's just clear some space here. Oop. So uh, let's use the work energy theorem now. So now we can say that the work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy. And again, the change in kinetic energy is just the kinetic energy final, the K at 2.5 seconds. So that's, that's what we're looking for. In other words, to find the, the K value here, all I need to do is figure out what is the work done. Well, if this force is constant, if my force of six newtons is, is constant, uniform force, then I'm going to have a uniform torque. So I can reduce this expression um, work, I can say, then is equal to torque times delta theta. And I can find the torque right away. Torque is just the tension force here, T times R, right? T times R. So that's... Um, what is that going to be? That's going to be 6 times 0.2. This is negative, right? Um, so we're going to have a negative, the negative of 6 times 
to negative torque, right, because it's pulling it clockwise. So this gives me negative 1.2 Newton meters. So that's my torque. I can go ahead and, and plug this 1.2 in for torque. But now I have to find delta theta. What is this delta theta value? Well, again, I'm going to use a kinematic equation. I'm going to say delta theta equals omega initial t plus 1 half alpha t squared. So I can say delta theta is, well, omega initial 0, right? So this whole term goes away. And I'm left with 1 half negative 24 times 2.5 squared. And this gives me negative 75 radians. So now I can plug this in for delta theta right here. And what do I get? Lo and behold, I get, uh, oop, I made a mistake over here. The torque is negative, right? to negative 1.2 because of that negative sign. So we have negative 1.2 times negative 75, and indeed we get, again, 90 joules for our kinetic energy. So two different ways of approaching this problem. One, just by using um, definition of kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, and the other by using the work energy theorem. Uh, so it's Brief introduction to this topic, we'll have a chance to do a little bit of practice later.